In a world where many are struggling to find truth in the Word of God, the Church of Pentecost, through its sponsored program, The Pentecost R, brings you godly and soul-inspiring messages from seasoned men and women of God. Your life and my life should center on Christ. We should live a life to the extent that there should be no difference between our private and public life. The more God gives us, doesn't mean we should buy more material things, but rather we should be conduit of blessings unto others. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? God said marriage is good. God cherishes family life. And it's up to you and me to bail God out. This year, our theme remain in Christ and his basic message is based on 1 John chapter 2 verse 24 to 25. As our men and women of God rightly divide the word of truth for your understanding. Pentecost are on Pent TV. Remain in Christ and his basic message. status where he has placed us and especially our dear chairman and his family when I was reading through the scripture reading the whole of the night I was contemplating on the turbulence that our Lord has sailed our chairman through in the air all the deadly potholes traveling all over the country, all the traumatic situations and moments, all the castigations. But then, the awesome God, the Lord who never caused his feet to slip, has done it again. Nothing can be compared to this God than to say, there is none like, like you. you. The, the living God, your kingdom, kingdom never ends. You excel in glory. You, you stretch forth your hands through
describe what you have done for us. Our minds can never comprehend your goodness. Our eyes can never perceive the depth of your love towards us. If you are what we are today, it is your making. Together with the Okunina family, you join our hearts and say, Father, you deserve our praise. We worship you. We adore you. We glorify you. I'm reading from the New International Version. Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 to 25 at that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom five of them were foolish and five were wise the foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them the wise ones however, took oil in jars along with the alarms. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed the alarms. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold. To another, two bags. And to another, one bag. Each according to his ability. Then he went out on his journey. The one who had received five bags of gold went out once and put his money to work and gained five, more, five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received the one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, You entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the, one, the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Amen.
Hallelujah. I'm speaking to the topic opportunity. Opportunity. The scriptures we just heard spoke about or reminded us of two parables. The parable of the virgin and the parable of the talent. Now, when you consider the parable of the talent first, if we look at the old King James Version, the way that, that's, that version used talent portrayed that there was a kind of ability that the master gave them. But if you look at the NIV, the NIV makes it clearer. It says talents of money. We will look at this talent of money and the ability together and look at what actually happened in these two scenarios of the parable of the virgin and that of the talent, draw some lessons and look at what we should do with the opportunity that we have. In the parable of the talent, the Bible says that a man was going on a long journey. Then he called his servants and he gave them talents of money or talent. Talents of money or talent those days were units of weight. Monetary units. Those days, money was not in notes as we have them. So if you want to carry a quantity, you have to weigh it. The Greek man will say talents of silver. The English man will say bags of silver. So they were units of weight. So he gave them money. But that unit of weight, talent at that time, or talent, is about 34 kilograms or 75 pounds. That translates to about 4,800 Ghana cities or $1,000. So if he gave someone five, it means that he has given the person about $5,000 or about 30,000 Ghana cities. He gave them to work with it. But he gave them according to the ability. So there is this issue of ability to, in this particular parable of the talent, ability. He gave them according to the ability. That is why when the man returned and they were giving account, the one who had five said, I have gained five more. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. Then the one who had two said, I have gained two more. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. There was nothing like very good, good. Because it was according to the ability. So everyone has done his part. He gave them according to the ability so there was nothing like good, very good, excellent, no. It was good, faithful servant. That is what your master gave you, and that is the ability he also gave you. For you to be an effective business person, you need both money and ability. You may have ability without capital. That money, if you do not have, your ability cannot make business for you because you need some support. But when you have the money and you also don't have the ability, you cannot not also succeed. But when it comes to ability, abilities differ. But success is for all. My ability is not like your ability and yours is not like mine. Psalm 139 says this. I read from verse 13. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Now, he is using some phrases and expressions. The 13 says that when you created 
my innermost being. You knit me together. Then 16 says that you wove me. And then 16 says that all the days ordained for me were written in your books before one of them came to pass. That is before anyone is born, the days ordained for him is written before. Now the days, if the days ordained for you is known by God before you came, then when he was working on you, he was putting abilities in you. Your days goes with your purpose. And you wouldn't spend time knitting, weaving, weaving and all that if he was not fashioning you for a purpose. So every one of us at conception has been granted graces, abilities, the power of mind and strength for use and for improvement. That is ability. The power of mind and strength for use and for improvement. But that ability is for all. That is why all of us can succeed. The lawyer can succeed, the capital can succeed, the clergyman can succeed, the statesman can succeed, the doctor can succeed. Everyone can succeed because we need each other. There was this young man who is a medical doctor. He has gone to the clinic, he's been consulting since morning. Around 1 p.m. he's hungry and he said, decides to go across the street to fetch get some food. He goes into a restaurant and there are cooks. Chef, cook, they bring him the food. When you go to medical school, they don't teach you cookery. They don't teach that. Way. So you can't say that I'm in my consulting room. You can't, I mean, you can't, no, no, no. When you are hungry, you need somebody with another ability to feed you. So this medical doctor goes to the restaurant for food, and when they fed the food, they didn't just put it in his palm. There is another someone who also has ability to craft things. So they put the food in a bowl, made from another ability. Then you have to sit down a woodworker will have to fashion something for him to sit on. When he finished eating, he had to wash his hand. He went to the tap, he opened it, and water was flowing. That is an engineer. He washes his hands, he thanks his God, he goes close to his vehicle, he tries to ignite it, and it will not ignite. No power. He's sweating. Then there is this mechanic. It's not the engineer. Common fitter. Fit a. Somebody will be fitting, fitting things. Fit a. Please, can you help me? He said, yes. But when the young man opened the bonnet, he realized that it was just a little problem. It was the terminus that were not Fitting well. But when he saw it, because he wanted money, he said, ha, I need to buy this. But this is a medical doctor who doesn't have any idea about the car. So the young man told him certain things and then he this had money. He went, he came back. The young man was sitting somewhere and this fitter tried to delay a bit so that the man would know that he's working. But what he was doing was that he was, he came with a stone eh, to just knock the terminals to fit the battle. Now he collects money. Let me ask you this question. The medical doctor, the engineer, the mechanic, the woodworker, who is the best? Hmm? Abilities differ. That is why we must respect all men. You see, the one who is even a security man in your house is doing a good job. Sometimes when I'm going to sleep and I see my security man who is also an elder, my heart bleeds because I see that the condition in which he works 
Maybe I will not be able to do it. Abilities differ. But success is for all of us. The king seller can succeed. The medical doctor can succeed. All of us can succeed. God has made all this so that we will be able to manage his world. So that one ability cannot manage this big world that God has created. We need one another. So he gave them according to their ability. But what they all had in common was time. If you read verse 19 of Matthew 25 where we read verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled account with them. Why he's settling account with them is that the money was from him, the ability was from him. If you come to God, the money, the resources he gives us, including the ability, is for us. So whatever we are doing, let us remember that one day God will call us into account. It doesn't matter how you are getting the money. Remember, a good and a purposeful life is led with the end in view. You must know the end before you begin. You must brace yourself for a good ride. You must know where you are going. See, you can, you can be picking money here and there. But remember, at the close of the day, you'll be brought to account. Asembi ra. What they had in common was not the ability, was not the money. What they had in common was time. After a long time. Now, that space was given to all of them. After a long time, from the time he gave them the money to the time he returned, nobody had an advantage. That period was given to all of them. Now, when you go to the parable of the virgin, he's saying that from verse Six, five, and six. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. What the scripture is saying is this. What caused the oil to run out? was time. You see, the, the oil ran out not because the container was leaking, but it ran out because of time. There was nothing extraordinary about the other five the parable calls as wise. The, the advantage was that they understood time. And they took extra oil. The extra oil would not have mattered if time had not been a factor. So what caused the oil to run out was time. Because they all slept. They all heard the cry. They all woke up. They all lit their, their, their light. But the light would not... The, the, it will not come up. Why? Because you have run out of oil. And what caused it was the long wait. So the time caused the, the oil to run out. That was the difference. What is time? Time is a mystery that we have tried to define. So the definition of time is the past, the present, and the future. Time is the past, the present, and the future. 
But the Bible gives us some meaning to time. He even tries to tell us when time began. Because God was before time. The Bible says in the beginning. So God was in the beginning. And he is, he is not part of the beginning. The Bible says out of him all things flow. And into him all things come into. That is a great God. Let's go to Genesis. And then let's examine what time is. Genesis 1. From verse 14. And God said, Let there be light in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years. Now He's going to create lights, and they are going to mark seasons, days, and years. He's going to create Something to mark seasons, days, and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give lights on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day, the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. To govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. God saw that it was good. What is time from this reading? I would think that time is a governor. Time is a governor. He is the mayor of the earth. See, if you don't respect time, you will live to regret. That is why we said that time will tell. All of us are growing. We are growing because of time. Some of us are losing hair. We are losing hair because of time. Some of us, sometimes when you look at your face in the mirror, you wonder if you are the same person. This is you. See? But we, we are all losing hair. We are changing because of time. Nothing grows better under the sun. You see, God would have been a very, 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 very old man. By this time, God would have died if he were here. But where he lives... The sun and the moon do not supervise them. Where, well, if you live under the sun and the moon, change and decay. The hymn writer says, "It's all around we see." If you want to keep fresh, you have to work very hard on yourself until you give up at a certain time. <laughs> if you ask your grandfather, he will tell you. How hard he has worked to keep his shape. But at a point in time, even combing the hair, the more you comb, the more they fall. So he decided not to comb because they will be falling anyway. <laughs> so you don't have to expedite that action. You have to keep them slow. Time is a governor. You need to respect time. It governs our life and it. Time is a gift. Psalm 118 verse 24 says that this is the day the Lord has made. The Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, so when you wake up to find a day, it is a gift. A gift God has actually given you to better your lot. So you can decide not to do anything in the day. Just be moving up and down, no purpose, no problem. Ask for time. It has been asked to govern the earth. It doesn't wait for anybody. It is fair to us. Yes, it is very, very uncompromising. Time is so uncompromising. But time is a gift. You have to use it to manage your life and to improve upon who you are. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Then the writer says, great is his faithfulness. He has granted us another new day. So when you see the sun, you see the moon, realize that they are governing your life. They are being faithful. But you have to take advantage of the gifts. 
Time is opportunity. Time presents chances, prospects, favorable occasions for advancement or success. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, this is what the Bible says. Ecclesiastes 9, 11. I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not for the swift or the battle for the strong. Nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. What he's trying to say is that nobody has an advantage. You may be brilliant, but those who are brilliant does not mean that all you need to succeed is to be first-class student in a school. No, because when you're a first-class student, there should be a king seller, somebody who can make that for you to eat. There should be an architect to, to design a building, and there should be somebody who will be able to construct that building. So, but time presents chances to all. It says time and chances happen to all. It's time, it's opportunity. So when you enter university in Ghana, you have an opportunity of four years or more, depending on the course that you are studying, to deliver, to turn your destiny in a proper direction. So you have an opportunity of four years. Definitely, there will be a day of accountability because of the factor of time. So you are going to write your final paper. Let me go to, let's say, the WASI and BEC. That is where a lot of tension is. Your first exams, BEC. Two hours. You find out that the invigilator will come around, say, hi, hello, how are you? He is very nice. Then he says, start work. He said, one hour gone, one hour more. He's still nice. He's smiling. And 30 minutes more, 15 minutes more, his voice, his tones tends to change. Then he said, five minutes more, get ready to stop work. The opportunity of two hours is now diminishing. Then he said, please stop work, pens down. Pens down, pens down. <laughs> now if you, if you do, he will fight with you. Now he has moved from that nice man to... I don't know what you say. <laughs> you know why he's doing that? The governor is causing him to change his voice. Because time is uncompromising. Once it is two hours, it's two hours. It should be fair to all. Time and chances. Remember your creator, the Bible says, in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Some day will come. You find no pleasure in them. But when you have strength, it's an opportunity. Human civilization has seen numerous people who have changed the course of history and influenced their sphere of living by their charisma, intelligence, and talents. Be it in the geographical expansion, arts and entertainment, science and technology, literature, politics, statesmen, and what have you. These individuals have seized history by their works, but time would not allow them to perform forever. We have Car the Carl Lewis, the Johnsons, the Michael Jordans. You see, time will not permit you to perform and live forever. When it is time for time to tell you it is over, it is uncompromising. They have not lived forever. So what do we do? We have to organize our life around balanced priorities because you cannot do all things. 
Because there is no time for all things. There is time for everything. You can do some things, but not all things. And time will not permit you to stay here till you do all things. No. I mean, the human race will ask you to go. Sometimes when time wants you to go and you don't want to go, you, you realize that you have gone past your time. Your generation is over. You have to go and rest. Opportunity they had expires. Moses, by inspiration, said that a man's life is three score and ten. That is 70 years. And if he has the strength, according to Moses, he could go like 80 years or more. But Moses is not God. That is why I'm saying that by inspiration. This is not from God. Moses said it. So let's say that if you want to live normally from day one to, let's say, 90 years, then God has actually privileged you. If you live for 90 years, you'll be living in three generations. Three generations. And I would define this generation as the entire body of individuals born and living together at the same time with one complete life cycle, with same attitude, same ideas, same social beliefs, and same social platform and challenges. Now, let me take that again. You see, we have a group of ministers here and their wives. They belong to a particular generation. It is about 23 to 30 years. Now, the first 23 to 30 years is the period of formation, the period of learning, the period of grounding. That the next 31 to 60 years is a period of service, where if you have studied something, you are now a teacher, a period of acquisition, you can say, this is my wife, that's my husband, that's my car, that's my child. A period of acquisition of titles and all that. But you see, time will be pushing you on. Around 61 is a period of release a period of relax, a period of consultation. But if you didn't do it well in the first and second generation, when it's time for you to relax, you can't relax. Yeah, because you have not worked. You have not used time wisely. You have not. That is why Paul says in Ephesians, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, as wise. Because the days are evil. When he was talking about the days are evil, he was not talking about witches and wizards. He was talking about the fact that the time is running faster than you think. We are in evil days. Why do we need to seize opportunity? We need to seize opportunity because according to 1 Corinthians 7, 29, time is too short. I was listening to Billy Graham. He was being interviewed and then a man asked him, what has, he, what, what has he learned in life after all these years of preaching? He looked at the man, he looked at himself, and he said, time is short. Time is short. Because he still has, he, he has, the, he has the spirit, but he doesn't have the energy. People will not tolerate him like they used to do in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. They will not. No, they will not. Time is short. But I want to say this morning that time is not just short. Time is too short. Two oh eight. I was in East Legon when the, the immediate <laughs> past chairman was elected. I was a district pastor in East Legon. I remember that I was in the house when he came home. I was part of the people who prayed. And then because of some issues, I had to look for policemen to guard the house. When I was doing all that, I didn't know that. <laughs> Ten years down the line, you yeah, look at that. I was in East Legon. And from 2008 to 2018, it has... Just been like a vapor. 
10 years. But you see, soon we are here. This As time presents as chance. I've said the first one is that time is too short. Very soon you realize that time will leave you behind. Number two, there is time for everything, but there is no time for all things. Because you are not created to live forever. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 3 says that there is a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to embrace and receive a chairman. And a time to say farewell to a chairman. There's time for everything. Number three, opportunity. It's not always available. An opportunity is not permanent. It's not always available. And it's not permanent. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 10, this is what the great apostle Paul said, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. He says that you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. So sometimes there could be that concern, but the opportunity may not be there. See, there are women who are worthy. They could take care of 10 children, yet they don't have the opportunity. They don't have it. When we were in South Africa, a friend of mine was going to have a wedding. And I loved to be around. In fact, I, I thought that as for this one, I could ask some permission. I have to be there. And my wife said, do you have money? You see, do you have money? That was a good question. Because even if the international business director says, come. For wedding, you are not going to come with the church's money. So my wife said, do you have money? So I have to go and make some calculation. I realized that I'm concerned. But my pocket will not give me that opportunity. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. When I was in PIWC, I felt sick, and my doctor advised me to take time and get ill so that I can recover. That was a good advice. So I decided that, okay, let me rest, and then so that I can recover. One of those days, I heard that a sister has been rushed to the hospital. Someone called me. Then I said, ha. What is it? And when he was trying to describe the kind of ailment, I was a bit disturbed. 
that I stood up and I started putting on my jacket. And when my wife came to the room, and she saw me. She said, where are you going? So I'm going to see this one at the hospital. She didn't say anything. But the way she opened her eyes, I realized that <laughs> she is telling me to go and die with him. <laughs> because you are sick. And they, they, they have told you rest. You hear a member is sick and you are going to visit the member. I said, go. Go and die together with him. You see, because, see, here I am, I'm concerned. But my health will not give me the opportunity. Opportunity is not always available. These are great preachers. I can see Apostle Atua Desen, Apostle Anson, Apostle Nobulachi. I can see them sit down for me to preach. But you see, their health may not give them the opportunity. <laughs> opportunity is not always there. But when you have it, Galatians 6, verse 10. Opportunity, because it's not always there, this is what Galatians 6, 10 says. I rejoice, therefore, as we have opportunity. Let us do. The way do is the perfect definition of a verb. Take action. And then when he says, when you are taking action, be careful. Because the past will be brought into account. So he said, do, but do good. When you have opportunity to be a manager or a director, don't say, bless God. And then, corrupt the system. Take action. But the action that you are taking, take a good action. Because at the end of the day, God will bring the past to account. When you have the opportunity, say that, do good. Opportunity is not always there. But when you have, do good. The fourth point is that opportunity seized is the basis of reward. When you seize the opportunity, that will bring you reward. See, the man said, good and faithful servant, well done. Paul told the Philippians that my God will supply all your needs because of the opportunity they seize and they send what it to to him. Then he says that my God will supply your needs. Opportunity seize is the basis of reward. But there are some factors against opportunity. Sometimes God grants us that space. But factors like the fear of men, fear of men, God has given you the space to become the chairman of this great church. The fear of men can cripple that opportunity that you have. Inability to exert oneself to the tax. Sometimes the opportunity is there, but the person is very slothful, lazy, then opportunity runs out. Lack of concentration on the tax and the space that time has given the person then opportunity runs out. I think some of these things, Saul will be a, a very good teacher. See, Saul was made a king. He will leave the palace and chase only one man. At that time, he was a boy. The, a boy who describes himself as a fly. The whole king will leave the palace looking for one person. He didn't concentrate on the job. He was looking for an enemy. All his life, you must concentrate. Then another factor that militates against opportunity is delay. Delay. In Genesis chapter 43, verse 10, the scripture says this. If we had not delayed, we would have gone and come back two times. This was a statement that Judah made to his father. Because he didn't want to release them to go. Now the old man was so angry. Things had gone back. And Judah said, if we had not delayed, we would have gone and come back twice, two times. So delay, you can delay certain things forever. And you may never recover them. You can delay even your own destiny. And then things will slip by. 
do not delay. When the opportunity presents itself, the Bible says, do. Take action, but take good action. As I conclude, I want us to consider Samuel. The book of Judges are events that took place between Joshua's death and the rise of Saul and Samuel. Samuel was not a priest. He was one of the judges of Israel, in fact, the last of the judges, but he functioned as a priest and a prophet because he didn't belong to the Levites. He was brought there to serve, and by so doing, he functioned as a priest, and he was also a prophet. But his generation had this kind of foundation. Judges 2, verse 10 to 13, the Bible says, after that whole generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what had what he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served Baal. So we are seeing that he was born at a time where people did not know God and they served Baal and the Asherah. Let's hold that one. He was also born at a time where the Bible says that in those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as he saw fit. Lawlessness. Israel had no king. Everyone did as he saw fit. He was also born at a time where the Bible says that in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions, even though there were priests. There were no many visions. The word of God was rare. But Samuel took his time. Seized the opportunity. By the time he was leaving the scene, he had anointed two kings. So it cannot be said of Israel again that everyone is doing what he deems fit because there is no king. No. Two kings. By the time he was leaving the scene, this is what the scripture says in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1. The Lord was with Samuel. As he grew up, he let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, that is from the north to the south, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh. And there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word, that is the word of God in Samuel's mouth, came to all Israel. By the time he was born, the Bible said the word of God was rare. There was no revelation. But now, before he left, from Dan to Beersheba, everybody recognized that he is an attested prophet of the Lord because they were hearing, thou says the Lord again. And the Bible said no word of his fell to the ground without being accomplished. Now, listen. You can change your world. We can possess our nations. We can turn things around. You have an opportunity to live. Now, chapter 7, 1 Samuel, from 3 to 4. Remember that they were, they didn't know God, they were seven bound and the Asherah. This is what Samuel caused the Israelites to do. And Samuel said to the whole house of Israel, if you are returning to the Lord, if all your hearts, then rid yourself of the foreign gods and the Asherah, and commit yourself to the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. So the Israelites put away the Baals and the Asherah and served the Lord only. What a great man. What a great man. Someone lived in time. Seized the opportunity that time presented him to change his world and turn people back to God. Soon, your opportunity will be over. What will you want to be remembered for? Now, people who have seized the opportunity and done well, they bow with pride and they live satisfied. 
Let's take our last reading. First Samuel chapter 12. This was his farewell speech from verse 1. Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to everything you said to, to me, and I've set a king over you. Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I am old and gray. My sons are here with you. I have been your leader from my youth until this day. Here I stand. Testify against me in the presence of the Lord and his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Whose donkey have I taken? Whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? From whose hand have I accepted a bribe to make me shut my eyes? If I had done any of these, I will make it right. Can you say that? Before your congregation, listen to the people. You have not cheated or oppressed us, they replied. You have not taken anything from anyone's hand. Samuel said to them, the Lord is witness against you. And also his anointed is witness. And also his anointed is witness this day. That you have not found anything in my hands. He is witness they said then Samuel bow out in glory he met a situation time presented on opportunity he seized opportunity and he turned Israel back to God what will you be remembered for the opportunity to be a parent how are you parenting your children the opportunity to be a wife how are you being a wife see there was this uh, couple that came to me, they have been coming to my house and see, they will not take my advice. The one day they came, I thought I was also tired. So I said, that, okay, please bow down your hands, please. Sister, pray. I bless your marriage. So pray that today I'm not going to have this young man as my husband. Then, when you finish, I'll bless it and I'll separate the marriage. <laughs> For about two minutes, she was not praying. She said, oh, now you are not praying. You, see, when you have an opportunity to marry, marry well. It is an opportunity. See, there are so many ladies who are in the church who don't have husbands. You, you have an hus a husband and look at what you are doing. An opportunity to have a spouse. An opportunity to be a minister of God. An opportunity to be a statesman, honorable. An opportunity to be a medical doctor. An opportunity to be a nurse. You don't have to be callous and see people die when you could have helped the situation. What will you be remembered for? Opportunity. God bless us all. Me nanya me, I fear me, Sanya washa. Me maya, shall we please rise to our feet? Nanya me, I fear me, Sanya washa.
We are running out of time. Let's tell God something about the opportunity given us, about our marriage, our businesses, the way we've been parenting, the way we've been ministering and pastoring the flock. Let's tell God something, because it is you, God has placed you in that environment to do something. Tell God something about whatever you found your hand doing. Shall we pray? for grace, we have for mercy, we have for, for wisdom, we ask that the Holy Spirit will descend on us, then every child, for every weakness from us, give us the enablement to be able to do as you want us to do. We pray. After that, we invite Apostle Nico Tejani to come and pray. Rade pasa o Wonderful shin. 
the one Joe, you uncomfortable. Nun chop the attack, papa. I can upgo or two, living in Katana. Amen. Oh, you Serving as a minister in the Church of Pentecost is gloriously tough. So when one is retiring, we give the fellow certificates of service. And I want to read out what we have for Chairman Apostle Professor Opoku Onyina. The Church of Pentecost, Certificate of Service. Name of Officer, Apostle Professor Opoku Onyina. Position held, Chairman. Period of service, 1976 to 2018. Course of living the service, retirement. Efficiency, excellent. General conduct, excellent. <laughs> Signed on the 26th August 2018 by Apostle Eric Nyamiche, Chairman of the Church of Pentecost. <laughs> and Apostle Alas Nanaya Kumilabi, the General Secretary. We want to ask the Executive Council members to join us. We shall ask um, our former president, His Excellency, to join us. And then we ask our brethren from Ilim also to join us to do the presentation.
the honor of presenting the certificate of service to the man of God, Apostle Professor Opoku Onyina. We do that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Praise the Lord. The family is a big family. My siblings are 28. And then staying in the ministry for 42 years, wherever you go, you get a family member. So we would humbly request the family members to sit down now, uh, remaining the children. Um, um, so, yeah, stress us, the air drain, I feel. Ebusian mube to me at Nasi. Ya tojum nevi e damasi bibri. Se asu awa hua ene ma minina uh omun chega krana omuno. Yin yo mun chrena ya papa kwame openini kwame kansa so eh. Eradi ni wu yesu kri. So asahe Rebecca Free. And also, I don't know. Aha. Yo. And the other friend, one, you know, a day. Ninu, you come on, son, mammy, but you, or no son, I see. And I, you know, you are paying you so any general honor. Or no son, a friend, a sister, Mary, Mary, say, wa. And I, me, I would dear, young papa, dear, and so paying me, cramming cancer, or no son, no. And I knew you are no be, and so now it's now a cow. And the other must be brave. Namino di Machi, Ankara Suye, Apostle, or no solo. Why, Unina? Hey, you know, Mabo Brana, Anna, Unina Jamfizu Suye Minia, or no Suye Minia. Our friend, no Suya, or Stephen, hey, or no Nekachi, Anna. Uh, also for uh, Caleb, uh, also for uh, being for the pastor, Doctor Caleb Opokunyani. Uh -huh. All right. Anna Nicholas Aj. Uh -huh. Anna Mark Enzo Suna Ijnahano. Mark Opoku Efri. Anna Daniel Opoku Jewanu Suna Wahey. Anna Grace 
Cheibuete. Anu swa ya sof ma mi sisi. Enti yada masi bebre ma mi numya pacho montrasi. Yada masi bebre. Oma bua yempa wo yajume yimu. His Excellency John Mahama, the immediate past president of Republic of Ghana. Apostle Eric Kwabne Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. <laughs> then Apostle Dr. M.K. Intumi, a former chairman of the Church of Pentecost. <laughs> the distinguished people of God, brothers and sisters, you have surprised me with your presence and gifts that I just do not know how to thank you. Permit me to adopt the strategy which was adopted by one young man I want to cite. This young man was very busy and hard working that whenever he got home, he could not pray before sleeping. Whenever he wanted to pray, he would fall asleep. He therefore wrote down his prayer and put it at the back of his bed. Whenever he wanted to sleep, he would tell God, Father God, you know I am tired, but I want to pray to you, and I can pray. Often when I'm praying, I fall asleep. So Father, here we are with my prayer. See it at the back of the bed. And then he will pray. His Excellency, Chairman Yamiche, people of God who have met here, I want to thank each one of you here, those watching us and all who supported us to accomplish what God wanted us to do in order not to keep you sitting down far too long. I have written my thanksgiving and inserted it in the brochure. If you look at the brochure, <laughs> you will see my thanksgiving, including our friends from abroad and all those people who are here. So please accept it as something coming from my heart. May the Lord God Almighty bless each one of you. Long live the Church of Pentecost. Long live Ghana. Long live the Church of God. Long live the nations of the world. And may the Lord continue to reign supreme. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to now thank God for the life of our great dad. We want to pray that God will grant him the blessedness of retirement. That he should continue to be fruitful even in retirement. We want to respectfully ask that some of us grant us some two chairs for him to sit on. We will do it here. And Two chairs, please. Here. May I ask the executive council members, the apostles on the platform to please come. Please, children, come and join us. Family, please. Shall we rise to our feet? 
to pour some anointing on us. He's not going to let his servant go without putting some of his spirit upon us. So I want you to be ready to catch the mantle. I want you to be ready to receive some anointing from the almighty God. Whatever that he, God endowed with him with, that you desire. I want you to specifically ask. Ask more than one. Any of the qualities that you have heard. Let us pray that God will quicken us. Even as he, his servant is bowing out of this active ministry, may he grant that spirit that he gave him. May he give some to us so that we'll be able to continue his work. Shall we pray together? No, Sombayande. Acts, 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 and God is going to give us. Bolambe, Katayan, Lerere, Babolo, Mosene. Be a cariando, Masiketena, Spirit of the Living God. You are a mighty one, O God. We are praying, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you pour, oh God, in out your spirit, oh God, upon us. In the name of Jesus, suon da be tayendo mo sende, raba katende mo sikita ya makoro basende, birianda da 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 babolo mo sikita ya na, bi akayendo mo sende de 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 de, bi kikayendo ro 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 bos. We are so Pour out your spirit on me. Ignite your fire in me. Touch and make me anew. My Lord Jesus. Touch. And make me a new, my Lord Jesus. Pour out your spirit on me. Ignite your fire in me. Touch and make me a new. Ask Chairman MK to me to pray for our dad and his family. And executive council members come close and lay hands on them. Precious Lord, your church stands before you, surrounding your servant, who is a father, a leader, trailblazer in all things and his wife and family. Thanking you, O God, for their service to you and to the nations for 42 years of excellence in leadership. Thank you, O Lord, because we are indeed amazed how the water flowing through somebody, as you said, that those who believe in you out of their bellies shall flow rivers of water how the rivers flowing through your servant and his wife has nourished and refreshed the nation, nourished and refreshed the world, 
nourished and re refreshed the Church of Pentecost and Ghanaian Christianity. We stand in awe, O oh God, and as we celebrate what you have given him, we actually celebrate your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. For Lord, what can we say? The physical strain of being a chairman, traveling up and down, the emotional burdens, the weight of responsibility, which is able to weigh people down. But Lord, you have sustained him. You have upheld him. You have uh, borne the burden of the work so that his shoulders were not crushed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, according to your own decision, according to your own planning, according to what you told us this morning, that you have a time for everything, the time has come for your servant and family to proceed on retirement. Father, we commit them into your hands. Father, Lord, we commit them into your hands. Amen. Sustain their physical lives. Lord, we know much has gone out of him. But Lord, sustain his frame. Grant unto him a new heart. That of a, a young man. Grant him, O oh Lord, fresh blood, that of a 20-year-old, that Caleb's proclamation and testimony, he will also be able to say, I'm 80 years now, but my strength is still the same. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Your word tells us that when Naaman had come out of the river, all the leprosy was gone, but also all the scars, the marks of warfare that were on him were also healed. Father, the period of warfare as a leader, not people against him, but battling for your, your, your ways and your, and your plans for the church, we do ask any wounds that may have come, heal them all. In the name of Jesus, your servant has much, much, much to offer the church and the world. According to your word, that we shall still bear fruit in old age. So this is what we pray for them. Father, we pray for mommy. Mama Grace, oh Lord, strengthen her by your goodness. Amen. Refresh her, oh God. Amen. Make her even look much younger than she is today. We pray for the family, the pastors among them, the students among them, the workers among them. Lord, into your hands we commit them. Let them know the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And together may we glorify your name. You have so much. And according to your word, you will harvest much. May the Lord grant you the physical strength to enjoy. We are told that God makes the day, but it's our business to enjoy. So God has created this retirement, but it's your business to enjoy. Rejoice Amen. in your retirement and have every joy in it. We thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the Lord God Almighty, the God whom you have served from your youth, may he continue to be with you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you the needed peace. May the Lord keep you from the hands of the destroyer. May the Lord God raise his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the Lord cause you to be fruitful, even in your old age. May he strengthen your home like that of the unicorn. May the Lord be with you and keep you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah
Oh. 